everybody, and welcome to the Movie Pit Podcast. I am your host, Christian. Ah, it feels good to be back. It feels really good to be back. Uh, So, before we get to why I've been gone for so long, uh, let's first, uh, for all you new listeners, potential new listeners, or just people that forgot you were subscribed to this podcast... Um, this is the podcast where we talk about all of the latest breaking big movie news items of the week. We also talk about the big, the big trailers that came out this week, and we talk about the movies that are out in theaters this weekend for all your viewing pleasures, and of course everything far in between, uh, movie related. So, uh, why has this podcast been gone for so long? Um, if you remember, at the beginning of the year. I pretty much gave uh, a reasoning behind why uh, or why I was gone for so long before. And one of those reasonings was I was getting a little burnt out because I was doing the podcast uh, pretty much every week by myself for the most part. And I just needed, you know, some, some time. And uh, I wanted to see where, what the future of the podcast would hold. And I mentioned that the podcast would probably go bi-weekly. Um, week by week, every now and then, uh, as long as I can get some people to be involved on the podcast. So, uh, last week, or not last week, but uh, pretty much all of March, um, there were some great movie news items that I would have loved to talk about on the podcast. The problem was, I got very sick. I was sick for two weeks straight. It took me out of everything. I couldn't. I didn't even go to work for those two weeks. Um, so I was, I was pretty much out of it and, um, I got better the, the third week, uh, but that week was my, my birthday weekend. So I didn't really want to do anything. Um, and then, uh, last week, uh, it was just pretty much a, a kind of a really slow news week. Um, so I didn't really feel like I should have, I didn't really feel like doing a podcast for no reason other than being like, Hey, I guess what? I'm back giving you guys the explanation that I'm giving you now and then be like, oh, by the way, there's only one movie news item Um, and not very good movies out in theaters. So uh, I wanted to come back this week because uh, another reason why I wanted to come back so quickly was because uh, we're reaching really close to episode 100 on this podcast. Uh, This is episode 99, which is crazy to me. Uh, So the next podcast we do is episode 100 and I am a little nervous to do that podcast. Um, so yeah, I should we should have had episode 100 already, and we should be far into getting probably at that point probably 150 at this point. But uh, that's not the case. Uh, so yeah, that is why I've been gone all month, and why I haven't been updating the Facebook page or updating the Twitter page at all. I apologize. Like I mentioned, I was sick for two weeks straight, took me out, um, and I usually don't get sick that badly, and I did this time. Don't know what happened, uh, but uh, I'm back, and the podcast is back, and summer's right around the corner, and that usually means I have a lot more time to do a podcast, so the podcast probably will go back to weekly, a weekly basis on that, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I just wanted to... First of all, I apologize to all you guys for, for not doing the podcast. I love doing the podcast. You guys know I love doing the podcast. Um, even though there's probably not that many people that listen, but I'm okay with that. So, uh, yeah, that's what's been going on for the last month. Let's just talk about some movie news items now. So, I'm not going to talk about all the movie news items, obviously, that I missed because that would take forever. But there was a lot of great movie news items I would love to talk about. But, um, Sally, that's not the case. So we're just going to focus on the movie news items that came out this week, with the exception of one, uh, because there was one movie news item that came out over the weekend, uh, thanks to CinemaCon. And CinemaCon, by the way, it's not like Comic-Con, although it kind of is like Comic-Con, although CinemaCon is mostly for uh, movie theater chains. That's where the studios pretty much all go and uh, in front of a room full of, you know, people that work at uh, at, a... at cinemas like AMC or you know Regal or whatever, and they pretty much give a presentation of everything. So there's a lot of that going around. I don't want to talk about it too much. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about it at all, really, except for this movie news item. But uh, I don't usually talk about CinemaCon too much because we don't see anything. Like not, not nothing leaks out 
of CinemaCon like trailer wise. Like they've been showing trailers and and snippets of stuff for movies coming out uh, later this year, but that stuff never goes out because it's a bunch of theater owners and they don't want to piss off the studios. I'm not gonna recap anything like I usually do for San Diego Comic Con, but uh, just know that CinemaCon is I think it's still going on. Uh, I think today's the last day or something like that. So this movie news album came out of CinemaCon. But it's a pretty big one, uh, because Mark Hamill is going uh, to voice the new Chucky in the reboot of Child's Play coming out later this year. Uh, Hamill himself came out uh, on a social media. It was a message basically to the CinemaCon audience, but he released it on his Twitter as well, uh, that he's going to be voicing the new Chucky doll. Um, and he said this about the role, about taking on the iconic role, basically, of Chucky, saying, quote, I can't wait to bring such an iconic character to life and present him in a way we've never seen him before. Of course, Hamill would be taking over for Brad Dorif, who voiced the character since the beginning of the franchise, and um, Hamill, it was voice at least, will join Aud- uh, Audrey Plaza, who plays the mother in the movie, and Brian C. Henry, who's also in the film. Uh, like I mentioned, it comes out later this year, comes out in the summer, comes out on June 21st. That is when it officially comes out. Uh, Child's Play, it's 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 going through a really weird and interesting... Um, and I say interesting because it's this weird little thing going on. Uh, Brad Dorif and the creator of Child's Play, Don um, Mancini, are actually working on a Child's Play TV series and that has nothing to do with the movie. And there's a lot of hardcore fans out there who are upset that Don Mancini isn't involved in some way with the reboot um, and that's pissing a lot of fans off and but the fact that they're doing a Child's Play TV series has again nothing to do with the movie uh, is just it's, it's a little weird uh, that we have two things going on for Child's Play although if you're a fan of Child's Play this could really work out for you but again there's just a there's a large camp of people who are upset at the new reboot um, just purely off the fact that Don Mancini is not involved in it at all. But what can you do? All right, so that's really the only news item that came out over the weekend. And by the way, if you're a new listener, that's usually kind of what I do. After the podcast goes up, there's usually at least one or two big movie news items that come out uh, after I've done editing and uploaded and everything, and I can't stop it, um, that come out after the podcast is uploaded or comes out. Uh, and I usually talk about those movie news items very quickly here at the beginning of the podcast, so... There, there is that. All right, uh, let's move on to trailer talk. Coming soon to theaters. Trailer talk is where, of course, we talk about all the movie trailers that came out. We have quite a few movie trailers that have come out. Some came out over the weekend. Some came out this week. So the first movie trailer we're going to talk about is the new trailer for Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. This town has told stories about. Horrible stories. But they don't realize. I have scary stories of my own. Sarah Bellows. Tell me a story. Sarah Bellows' book, where the stories write themselves and it all comes alive. You don't read the book. The book reads you. I'm afraid I'm gonna die, Dad. Next. Next. The film is based off the series of books, of course, created by or written by uh, Alan Schwartz. That, and the movie takes place in 1968 and revolves around a young girl with horrible secrets who lives in a mansion on the edge of town. And when a group of teenagers stumble upon the mansion years later, they are led to discover the true horrors that await. Uh, the film is directed by Andre Ordeval. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. I don't know. Uh, he's directed films like Troll Hunter and The Autopsy of Jane Doe. Those two are uh, very good movies. If you're horror fans, highly recommend you check them out. And yes, Guillermo del Toro is involved in the project. He wrote the story for the film. Not the script. He wrote the story 
for the film. Uh, he was originally going to direct, but he got so busy that he stepped down from the director's chair. And Del Toro himself is actually a huge fan of the series. Uh, he has been involved with the project ever since the early days of of the movie. Like I mentioned, he was going to direct the movie, but he had to step down. And he even owns original artwork from the illustrator of the book, uh, Stephen Gamel. And he uh, and it was really cool. Uh, years ago, uh, he had Guillermo del Toro had the exhibit at the LA, um, use one of the LA museums, and I got to go to it and I got to see the the actual illustrations that he had, uh, and it was really really cool. So scary stories to tell in the dark. Like I mentioned, it's based off the series. I remember reading the the uh, the novels. I didn't read them frequently, but I read them enough that I have some uh, you know graphs some grasp to it and the movie looks really the movie looks pretty good and I, I'm a huge fan of the director I love what he did with um, the autopsy of Jane Doe which was one of those movies that if you knew about it when it came out you and you know a horror movie fan they probably hopefully they would recommend it to you uh, but I would recommend autopsy of Jane Doe because you kind of get a little bit of that um, kind of style wise in the trailer so it looks like it's gonna he's gonna continue that with um with this uh, and he has a very good grasp of horror as well so i'm kind of really excited to see uh him and Guillermo del Toro team up for sure um like i mentioned it's a series of books it's been reported uh, del toro has been going around doing interviews for the project it's confirmed that the stories the big toe the red spot the dream uh amti doti and walker or doti walker i should say uh and harold are all stories that will be confirmed or all stories that are confirmed i should say for the movie there are other stories that will be referenced throughout the movie but those haven't been uh been talked about the movie won't be an anthology it all is connected uh by one uh story thread and if you saw the trailer or like i just played the trailer right now uh the character of sarah bellows will be that connecting thread from all these stories so a scary stories to tell them dark opens on august 9th We'll talk about, of course, more about that project once we get closer to the release date. Uh, so let's move on to the next trailer. I wasn't going to talk about this trailer, but then I decided against it because, um, one, it, it came out on April. The trailer came out on April uh, on April 1st, which is, of course, April Fool's Day, which a lot of websites always, you know, put something out there to, you know, fool everyone and, you know, stump everyone and, and a lot of times they put out something that sounds really good to be true and I thought this was the case but it's not I, especially with the cast I was like oh maybe they just all got together and they're like yeah we're just gonna have you know some fun with it no this is a real movie coming out it's called The Dead Don't Die in this peaceful town on these quiet streets something terrifying something Horrifying is coming. Excuse me, we're closed. Ah, get away from me! Ah! Ah! What the hell was it? A wild animal? This is really awful. Maybe the worst thing I've ever seen. What was it, wild animals? So what are you thinking? I'm thinking zombies. What? You know, the undead. Ghouls. <laughs> You look gorgeous. Oh my. Are you in this together? Flesh eating zombies. Don't joke, it's really, really creepy. <laughs> oh, I... oh man, this isn't gonna end well. When I was a boy, I a... They gravitate towards things they did when they were alive. Coffee. Chardonnay. Did she just say Chardonnay? Yeah, she did. Welcome to my world, zombies. I've been telling you this is all gonna end badly. Well, that's unfortunate. I'm quite confident of my ability to defend myself against the undead. I can see that. Excuse me. Those are some pretty good cuts. You played some minor league ball, didn't you? Well, um, a little class A. It was a long time ago. 
So the movie has a very impressive cast. Bill Murray, Adam Driver, they play as sheriffs uh, in the town that this is taking place. It's being overrun by zombies. You have Tilda Swinton as a mortician who has a samurai sword and it looks like she's going to... It doesn't look like she does decapitate a lot of zombies with it. Uh, Selena Gomez is in the movie. Uh, Caleb Landry Jones, Rosie Perez, Steve Buscemi, Riza, Danny Glover, and Tom Waits uh, are all part of the movie. Uh, and they, it looks like they're all playing townspeople or people that visit the town or something like that. It looks... I don't know. I mean, it, it looks really fun. It, it, it's Like I mentioned, it's got a great cast. If anything, you know, you're know, you probably going to see it for the cast. So... The Dead Don't Die, I highly recommend you watch the trailer because it is a lot of fun to watch. Uh, Dead Don't Die comes out on June 14th, so we won't have to wait too long for that one. Alright, so let's move on to the next movie trailer. We only got two more, yes, we got two more trailers uh, that I'm going to deep dive into. And the next trailer we're going to talk about is Annabelle Comes Home. Everything you see in here is either haunted, cursed, or has been used in some kind of ritualistic practice. (laughs) Nothing's a toy. It's safer for these things to be in here than out there. Sometimes it's better to keep the genie in the bottle. Don't your parents keep any creepy stuff around? We keep it all locked away in a room so that we're safe. It's not really good for anyone to go in there. What'd you do to get in there? wrong house there's no Annabelle here yes she is I sometimes see things like how my mom sees things the doll it's a beacon for other spirits directed by Gary Dauberman who wrote the first two Annabelle movies and has been involved in the Conjuring universe um, since then. Uh, he will be making his directorial debut on the movie, which is really cool. Uh, Annabelle comes home, sees the evil Annabelle doll going up against the whole Warren family when she breaks free from her case and unleashes all the other cursed objects in the Warren's possession to haunt them. This marks the first time that Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga, who play Ed and Lorraine Lauren in the Conjuring movies, uh, when they will appear in an Annabelle movie, so that's kind of cool. Uh, although we don't know how much uh, of a role they'll play, but it's that's great seeing them involved in it. Although early reports uh, say it will follow mostly their young daughter, who is played by McKenna Grace, who is a name you should get very familiar with because uh, she's everywhere. She played uh, most recently uh, one of the younger uh, Carol Danvers from Captain Marvel. Uh, she's also been in a bunch of other stuff, so uh, that is a name you should get very familiar with, McKenna Grace. But uh, the movie itself looks really cool. Look, I-, I wasn't a big fan of the first Annabelle movie. I thought it was okay. I thought it didn't really didn't really do much for me. But then uh, Annabelle, the second one, Annabelle Creation, was great. It was it was a complete 180. It, it was really awesome. And um, seeing this one from the trailers itself, it looks. It looks great. It looks about what you would expect from Annabelle. It looks like there's, like I mentioned, the fact that she basically uh, turns all the other objects in the Warren's, um, I don't want to say treasure room, uh, the cursed object room. I know they have an official name for it, but I didn't write it down. But uh, her, her turning all of those objects against the Warrens and and uh, the young daughter, and uh, I assume it was a, a babysitter? Because uh, I don't think she actually is one of the daughters. It looks like she's one of the babysitters in the movie. Um, 
I think it's great. I think it's going to be really cool. I love the Conjuring universe. I love the first two Conjuring movies. Uh, I can't wait to see what they do with this. Um, I saw the trailer for the first time on the big screen earlier, um, or yesterday, I should say, and uh, I, it re I really got a kick out of it. So I'm look way looking forward to this. So, yeah. All right. The final trailer we're going to talk about here is the trailer that blew up the internet when it came out this week, and that is the trailer for Joker. Arthur, does it help to have someone to talk to? My mother always tells me to smile and put on a happy face. She told me I had a purpose to bring laughter and joy to the world. Hey, stop them! Is it just me? Or is it getting crazier out there? Smile, though your heart is aching, smile. Even though it's breaking When there are clouds in the sky You'll get by what? If you smile <laughs> To your fear and sorrow Smile And maybe tomorrow You'll find the life is still worthwhile What's so funny? Just Freak! <laughs> Gotham has lost its way. What kind of coward would do something that cold-blooded? Someone who hides behind a mask. I used to think that. My life was a tragedy. But now I realize it's a comedy. Directed by Todd Phillips, who of course directed the Hangover movies and last directed War Dogs. He also co wrote the film with Scott Silver who has written films like Eight Mile, The Fighter, and The Finest Hours, uh, follows a failed stand-up comedian, Arthur Fleck, played by Joaquin Phoenix, who is driven insane and becomes a psychopathic murderer. So yes, it is an origin story for the famous Batman villain, the Joker, but it's not connected to the DCEU, or whatever the hell they're calling it now. Um, it's supposedly, this is the first film that will supposedly start... A series of one-off story films movies that involve DC characters so they want to make these movies that don't have any connection to the universe they're putting together with like Batman v Superman Wonder Woman Shazam Aquaman all that stuff uh, so the film is inspired by Martin Scorsese's iconic films like Taxi Driver and the King of Comedy ironically enough Robert De Niro <laughs> will appear in the movie is actually going to star in the film and you briefly see him in the trailer itself uh watching the trailer you can clearly see the influence uh of those two movies uh, like i mentioned CinemaCon earlier warner Bros. actually bought joker to the presentation and everyone was comparing it to taxi driver that saw the footage so it looks i, I mean look it's not your typical superhero uh, origin movie. It's not. And you can clearly see that in the movie. Uh, or in the trailer, I should say. I don't know how people... I mean, from the, from the most part, the reaction I saw was pretty positive. I think a lot of people are okay with Joaquin Phoenix playing Joker. Uh, I think it's going to be... I think the, the main thing will be when it actually comes out and we have to sit down, we have to watch the whole movie. For the most part, it looks like everyone's on board. From what I can see from online, I've seen some negative stuff you know, uh, about the movie, but for the most part, I thought the trailer was fine. I wasn't too hyped about the 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 the, the about the project in as a whole, but seeing the trailer, 
I can see why people are excited. I am I'm not too excited. I am going to go watch it cuz that's what I do. I go watch movies. But um for the most part, I don't know. I mean, I'm not hating on it. I'm not. I I I think it's a great trailer and it doesn't give away pretty much anything. Um so I, I'm not, you know, I just I'm not completely on board. But I'm on board enough where I can be like, you know what? Yeah, that's kind of piqued my interest. So the film co-stars uh, Zazie Beetz, Mark Marin, uh, Shane Wingman, Brian C. Henry, uh, which that's another name you should probably get to know, uh, Francis Conroy, and Brett Cullen. The Joker opens on, or it's just Joker, not the Joker. Joker opens on October 4th. We'll definitely be talking more about that project um, when it comes out, or as we get closer to the release date, uh, for sure. Uh, there's some other trailers that dropped, and we're not going to talk about them. Uh, the other trailers that dropped, uh, one of them was Domino, which was directed by uh, Brian De Palma and stars uh, Nikolaj Coster Waldu, aka Jamie Lannister from Game of Thrones, uh, and Guy Pierce. It's a revenge action thriller, so if you want to go check out that trailer, you can. There's also the first trailer for My Spy, which stars Dave Bautista as a CIA operative who teams up with a nine year old girl by accident. Um, so there's that. It, it's, it makes more sense when you watch the trailer. So, uh, yeah. Uh, all the trailers, if you haven't seen any of them or you want to go watch them again, are all linked down below in the description slash show notes area. So you guys can go check those out. Uh, let me know what you guys think. So that's trailer talk. Uh, obviously if any trailer drops, uh, tr- yeah, if any trailer drops, I don't know why that sounded weird the first time. Uh, if any trailer drops, uh, I will, uh, link them down below in the comments slash, uh, show notes area. And if it's a big one, we'll obviously talk about it uh, next week. All right, so let's move on, since we're done with trailer talk, to the movie news items of the week. All right. All right, so the first week, it's, it's still kind of a slow week this week. Uh, the first one is that Marvel's Black Widow adds, or is looking to add, two really big names. The long-awaited, of course, solo Black Widow movie, which will star Scarlett Johansson, is finally happening. Uh, a couple weeks ago, Florence Pugh, who was recently in Fighting With My Family, I hope I pronounced her last name right, uh, joined the film in an unknown role. And now we have one big name who is going to join the film, and another big name that's in talks to join the movie. So first, the name that will be joining the movie is David Harbour. Of course, the sheriff from uh, Stranger Things, and he will be seen uh, in a couple weeks. Yeah, in a couple weeks. Wait, next week? Is it next week? I think it might be next week. I, I, I'm losing track of time. Uh, he will be seen this month. We'll put it that way. I think it is next week, though. He will be seen this month playing Hellboy. Uh, so his role at the moment is unknown, but he did talk a little bit about it, and he said that it's a very cool role, and he's very excited to play it, so we'll have to wait and see on that. The second name that has an early talks to join is Rachel Weiss. And according to Variety, who broke the story, both sides, Marvel and her, are very interested but, of course, there is no word on yet on who she will play. And Rachel Weisz, by the way, um, from the Mummy movies, the Brendan Fraser ones, she was recently in The Lobster, and, of course, she's been in a bunch of other great stuff. So, there is that. Uh, Black Widow will be directed by Kate Shortland. She is mostly known for a Nazi drama movie called Lore and the romantic thriller Berlin Syndrome. Uh, and reports said the movie will start production in June, so we expect more casting updates and hopefully more of a story in the weeks to come uh so we'll have to wait and see about that um so far the cast is turning out great i mean of course you got scott johansson who has pretty much you know been doing gangbusters as the role of uh, natasha romanoff scarlet witch you got francis uh, or florence Pugh, i should say uh, again hopefully i'm pronouncing the last name right uh who killed it in fighting with my family she was also in netflix's the outlaw king and she's going to be in a horror movie coming out uh, in the summer called Midsommar, which looks pretty freaky. That trailer came out in the month that I was gone, uh, but she's going to be in that. And, of course, David Harbour is pretty much reliable on anything you throw him in, uh, and I'm actually looking forward to him playing Hellboy. Of course, we'll talk about that, of course, when the Hellboy comes out. And then you got Rachel Weiss, who is Rachel Weiss. I mean, she's great in everything, so, yeah. Black Widow looking out, uh, looking to be very good. Hopefully it is very good. And, of course, Avengers Endgame is right around the corner, so... Obviously, obviously, we'll talk about that when we get to it as well. Comedian and actor Camille Nanjiani is in negotiations to star alongside Angelia Jolie in Marvel's The Eternals. 
The project is based on the 70s comic book series created by the late and great Jack Kirby and got a reboot in the early 2000s by Neil Gaiman. The property features super-powered and near-immortal beings known as... Uh, anyone want to guess? No? No? The Eternals. And the more monstrous offshoot known as the Deviants. It was the 70s. Come on. That uh, were created by the cosmic beings known as the Celestials. Now, if that sounds familiar, it is because the Celestials were mentioned in the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Uh, they also have a connection to Thanos, but I will not ruin that in case they bring that into the movies. Joe Lee is reportedly set to play a character, or the character, I should say, of Cersei. No, not that Cersei. Settle down. Uh, an Eternal who, has, who is not afraid to move amongst mankind. Because in, in the comics, the Eternals don't want to mess around with humans. She is more open about it. Uh, and she will go down to Earth and be among them. Uh, Nanjiani's role is being kept a secret for now. The film will be directed by Chloe Zhao, who is known uh, for directing the movie called The Writer. The Writer, as in horse rider, not The Writer. Uh, like a book writer. Uh, anyway, the moment, uh, at the moment, it doesn't have a release date, but it, the movie will reportedly start shooting later this year, so we'll have to wait and see about that. Uh, the movie has also um, been in the, in the news for a while uh, because the movie, according to reports by Marvel, and I think even by Kevin Feige himself, the, of course the president of Marvel Studios, the movie will feature an openly gay character as one of its leads, which will be a first for the studio uh, since the MCU pretty much started. So, I mean, obviously there's been openly gay actors in Marvel films before, although most of them have been for, uh, or comic book movies in, in general. Uh, but I'll stick with Marvel at this point, since it is a Marvel property. Um, there have been openly gay actors in Marvel movies. Uh, the X-Men movies, the old X-Men movies. Uh, obviously, Alan Cumming, who played Nightcrawler in X-Men 2, and Paquin and uh, Ellen Page uh, were both openly gay at the time. I don't think Ellen Page was openly gay, but she was gay at the time. There was this big thing with her and Brett Ratner, who directed uh, X-Men The Last Stand, but if you want to read about that, it gets really nasty, but go, go on that. Anyway, the the, the project has been, in, it, it's been kind of under a microscope because of that recently, and there's people saying that, oh, they're just... They're just doing it as a fade or whatever, or just, you know, trying to make everyone happy. But, uh, you know, it's, we'll see how they handle it. Uh, but for the most part, um, I think this is pretty cool. Uh, Kamal Nanjiani, obviously, uh, being part of the Marvel family. Angelia Jolie, also being a part of the Marvel family. Uh, she's been rumored to be attached. She's been rumored for the project. Yeah, been attached to the project for a long time. Uh, ever since the project kind of first came about, her name was one of the first ones immediately attached to the project. So... It should be interesting to kind of see uh, how all this turns out, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, again, if the rumors of the, of production starting later this year, we'll obviously be hearing uh, a lot more about this uh, as the time goes on. It's probably around Comic-Con, honestly. I'll keep an ear out, and uh, we'll let you guys know about that. All right, the last movie news item, at least at the time of this recording, uh, Viola Davis is set to return to the Suicide Squad. Uh, so this is this is a movie news item that uh, developed like crazy when I was out, and I and, and this is one of the movie movie blah, blah, blah. this is one of the movie news items that I would have loved to really get into, but obviously it didn't happen. So the supposed reboot of the Suicide Squad is bringing back some familiar faces, which is confusing the hell out of everyone. Uh, so again, a little background on what we all missed out, or maybe you didn't know or you missed out on. Warner Brothers and DC Entertainment are moving forward with a Suicide Squad sequel, which we all knew. We reported on it when I was still doing the podcast. Uh, it was reported that it would be turned into a full reboot when James Gunn was attached to direct. Yes, that James Gunn, the director of the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Uh, when he got fired from Disney, he was in the, stuck in this limbo, and Warner Brothers was like, nope, we'll take him, and you, got, you can direct... Uh, the Suicide Squad sequel, which was then called The Suicide Squad, and it was, again, reported that it was going to be a full reboot, and of course, Disney was like, no, 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 we, we want him back, and they hired James Gunn to direct Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, but he will still do both movies because the timeline, I guess, works out. Okay, now you caught up on that little tidbit. The reboot was confirmed because Idris Elba was reportedly in talks to replace Will Smith as Deadshot course will smith played deadshot in the first suicide uh, suicide squad movie 
Then, I think it was like a week later, or like two weeks later, it was reported that Jai Courtney would come back to play Captain Boomerang, which is where the confusion started. (laughs) Now, according to the rap, Viola Davis is returning as well as the tough, of course, no-nonsense government agent, Amanda Waller, one of the better parts of Suicide Squad, who was in charge of Task Force X, which would be known as the Suicide Squad. On top of that, there's been rumors that Joe Kenneman, uh, who played Rick Flagg in the first movie, and Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn are rumored to come back. Although, of course, Margot Robbie, uh, her Harley Quinn, will be the lead in the Birds of Prey movie coming out next year. Confusion all around. So either way, uh, Suicide, The Suicide Squad will come out on August... August? What the hell is that? August 6th, 2020. I apparently forgot how to talk. August 6, 2021, so hopefully we'll get some confirmation uh, and some f- real answers uh, what the movie really is. Is it a full reboot? Is it a semi-reboot? Is it a you know weird reboot where we're just going to ignore the first Suicide Squad, which would be fine. I know I don't. There, I know there's you know people that enjoy the movie, but it was fine. It wasn't awesome. Settle down. Um, so yeah, well. I, I don't know. I, I Like I mentioned, I love Yola Davis and anything she does. I thought, like I mentioned, she was one of the better parts of the first Suicide Squad movie. Why is that so hard to say? Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I mean, this this is interesting. I, I, I just want to know if it's a full-blown reboot or not. And I think that's the thing that's really annoying people. Like, you can't have a full-on reboot and then bring back... I mean, I, although, if you want to bring Viola Davis back as Amanda Waller and ignore the events of the first movie, that's fine. Because she, like I mentioned, she was one of the better parts. She was awesome in it. Great. But Jai Courtney, out of all the people you want to bring back, Jai Courtney as Captain Boomerang? Really? Really? All right. I don't know. That's just, that's just me. Um, I'm looking forward to it, though. I am. I am looking forward to the Suicide Squad. Uh, I think with a James Gunn touch... It will be very cool and interesting, so yeah, we'll uh, we'll see what happens with that. All right, so that's all the movie news items that came out this week, the big ones anyway. And again, at the time of this recording, I guarantee you there will be one massive movie news item that comes out after this podcast goes up, uh, which always makes me mad, but whatever. Uh, so uh, yeah, so now we're going to move on to the movies coming out in theaters this weekend let's all go to the lobby let's all go to the lobby let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat all right so let's talk about our movies of the week we have quite a few of them actually to be honest uh so what we always start with our limited releases uh our first limited release is amazing grace it is a musical documentary uh presenting aretha franklin with the choir at the new Bethel Bath- Baptist Church in Watts, uh, Los Angeles, in January 19, uh, 1972. I'm sorry. Um, it's been getting a pretty good word of mouth. Uh, I think it premiered at some film festivals, and uh, everything they've been saying about it is really great. So if you're an Aretha Franklin fan, or if you want to know a little bit more about her and about this event, uh, the trailer itself is very powerful, so go, go check. Again, it's a limited release, so... Uh, just check your local theater or any theater in your area for any of these movies. The next movie is High Life. A uh, father and his daughter struggle to survive in deep space when they live in isolation. Robert Pattinson stars in the movie, so does Andre Benjamin, Mia Goth, and Juliette Binoche. Uh, it looks interesting. Uh, all the reviews that have been coming out for this movie are, uh, are saying that it's not going to be for everyone. Uh, just by the trailer itself, that's really what it looks like. But uh, for the most part, it looks like it's getting some pretty positive reviews. So there is that. And it's by A24, who of course have done uh, a bunch of movies like this that may or may not be for everyone. Uh, so, High Life. The next one is Teen Spirit. It was written and directed by Max Mangala, who himself has appeared. He's a actor turned director. He's been in the, min- uh, the Mindy Project on TV side, The Handmaid's Tale. He was also in The, show- uh, the Social Network. Uh, so it follows Violet, played by Elle Fanning, as a shy teenager whose dreams of escaping her small town and pursuing her passion to sing. With the help of an unlikely mentor, she enters a local singing competition that will test her integrity, talent, and ambition. 
I believe the mentor is played by Rebecca Hall in the movie. Um, and I saw the trailer for the first time a couple weeks ago. And it looks pretty good. It looks like she's. It looks like Elle Fanning actually does some of her singing in the movie. Um, there's gonna. I don't know. It looks. It, it looks like it's trying to be something, but we obviously know it's gonna be something else. From that's for, that's, that's kind of how the trailer comes out. So, uh, Teen Spirit. That's what it's called. Uh, the next limited release is The Best of Enemies. It is based off the book by O'Shea Gray Davidson. And it's also based on true events. Civil rights activist Anne Atwater, played by Chajari P. Henson, faces off against C.P. Ellis, played by Sam Rockwell, in 1971 Durham, North Carolina, which of course uh, was over the issue of the school integration. And of course, uh, C.P. Ellis actually plays the uh, leader of the Ku Klux Klan at, in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, Henson and Rockwell have been going around, you know, obviously promoting the movie, and they say. And one of the things that popped out to me with the, that they said was they they didn't want to Hollywoodize the true of the true events of the movie. So I don't know what that means. Uh, it should be interesting to kind of see how this turns out. Obviously, with the times that we live in, obviously movies like these are are very welcomed. Uh, so we'll see how that uh, turns out. It's a limited release. I believe it is getting an expansion as the weeks go on. So if you don't see it this weekend in your theaters, be on the lookout for it. The best of enemies. All right, so let's get to the wide releases of the week. Uh, I already saw one of these, so I'm going to give you guys a free, uh, spoiler-free thoughts afterwards. Uh, the first one is Pet Cemetery, which was the one I saw, based, of course, off the novel by Stephen King. Dr. Lewis Creed, played by Jason Clark in the movie, who, after relocating his wife, Rachel, and their two young children from Boston to rural Maine, discover a mysterious burial ground hidden deep in the woods near the family's new home. When tragedy strikes, Lewis turns to his unusual neighbor, Judd, setting off a perilous chain reaction that unleashes an unfathomable evil with hor horrific consequences. Almost got through it. Almost. Um, so the movie stars Amy Stymitz, who plays the wife, and John Lithgow, who plays Judd. Of course, it's a remake of the movie. I, I forgot when, the, when it came out. But uh, I saw it last night. It's... It's it's pretty it's a pretty solid it's, it's a pretty solid remake, um, it's a pretty solid horror movie, as well. There's some there's some pretty good scares in, in it. I know a lot of people were up in arms over the changes and the trailer, that uh, that gave away something. Uh, if you haven't seen it, if you somehow avoided all of the Pet Cemetery marketing, I won't give it away. But even the synopsis kind of gives it away a little bit too. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to again. I don't want to spoil anything for you guys. I just I, I would just say this it is a very solid horror movie some great horror moments uh, Jason Clark is great in it Amy, uh, Amy Steinmetz is fantastic in it uh, the little girl um, who, who plays their daughter in the movie who has a, a big part in the movie um, I think her name is I don't know how to pronounce her name but it's I think it's Jetty Lawrence maybe um, she's great in it as well she plays Ellie and um, yeah it's a pretty I wasn't a huge fan of the original Pet Cemetery movie to be honest, um, I thought it had some decent moments, but it's not something that I was really uh, a huge fan of. Um, and to compare the two is, is it, it's not really fair because they're both very different movies. Um, and I know everyone's up in arms like, oh, remakes. But I think if, if it's a book, I think it's okay if it gets remade because you can take different literations of it. Uh, I have not read the book now that we're speaking about it. I have not read the novel. Pet Cemetery. I've just seen the movies, but uh, from the remake itself, it's very atmospheric. It really puts you in the mood that it's a horror movie, so you're always on edge and everything. So I really enjoyed it. I think if you're a horror fan, you'll probably really enjoy it. Hopefully, you'll enjoy it. If you're on the fence about it, I recommend it. I think it's still pretty good. I think you'll have a good time with it. It is creepy. It will creep you out, but um, it, it's overall. I think it's it it's very worth your while. So, uh, yeah, go go watch Pet Cemetery, And the second movie we have is Shazam. Uh, we all have a superhero inside us. It takes a little bit of magic to bring it out. In Billy Batson's case, by shouting out one word, Shazam. The streetwise 14-year-old foster kid turned into an adult superhero, Shazam, played by Zachary Levi. The adult Shazam. The uh, Billy Batson, the kid version, uh, the teenage version, is played by Asher Angel. Uh, the movie also stars Mark Strong as the villain, Daminj Hansu, 
uh, is also in the movie. Obviously, he played uh, uh, oh, not Ronan. Um, oh my god, I forgot his name. Korath in Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, he's playing the wizard uh, that gives Billy Batson his abilities. Um, so yeah. I'm, uh, this is also directed by David F. Sandberg, who directed Annabelle Creation and Lights Out. Who He's a horror director who's directed this, this superhero movie, um, which I think is really great. And Shazam has been getting a ton, a ton of great word of mouth. It, it's it's getting a bunch of great, great reviews. Everyone's saying that it's fun. Uh, I'm still on the fence because it is still DC. Um, but uh, I, I'm going to, you know, just sit back and hopefully enjoy it and and watch it and fall in love with it like everyone else so hopefully that is the case um i actually have my buddy mike on the podcast today he's going to be talking about shazam and uh something else i believe as well i heard the clip i did i heard the clip but i i heard the clip in the morning and i'm recording this in the afternoon so i kind of forgot already but uh he has his own little he's gonna throw his two cents in here about Shazam as well. Uh, so, uh, yeah, here's Mike. Hey guys, this is Mike. I'm coming this week with some news and I'm going to talk about Shazam. I just saw it a few hours ago and give you my thoughts. Um, first up, the end game, non nightmare of ticket buying. It's, it's intense. I, two theaters out by me, I waited an hour. In line, and it was only front row tickets. I was able to snag some. Hopefully, you or two, if you're listening, this movie's gonna blow up. Talking about the ending of the Infinity Saga, man, this movie has potential. Probably be the biggest movie ever made in terms of box office and hype, and just I, this movie could probably stay in theaters until December, based off of all the hype I've been seeing online. I'm very excited to see it. Hopefully everyone can see it at some point, even if you got to wait a week and you can avoid spoilers. Um, a movie like this, there's probably going to be some pretty big ones, <laughs> so I wanted to see it as 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 soon as physically possible So I, as to try and avoid those. Um, also, too, this week, we uh, we got some looks at some potential... It's a movies coming out. Uh, the Joker, Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, this movie is uh, going to be an Elseworlds kind of film, so it's not in continuity with uh, a lot of the DC Universe. But it looks like it has a lot of potential. Um, his laugh in the trailer is just like all the p- perfect amounts of creepy and unsettling. He's an incredible actor. Um, it looks like it's going to be more of a deep dive into mental health and and uh, be more grounded He gets some shots of Thomas Wayne very briefly, and it looks like the Joker's outside of Wayne Manor making uh, a young Bruce Wayne smile with his fingers. Um, it, It would change, obviously, how we know the Joker's origin to kind of be something unknown, but at least we know that part of why he becomes to his level of super villain is because of the existence of Batman. So this origin story kind of seems to rub people the wrong way because the idea that the Joker doesn't have a known origin story adds to his um, his mystique, but also to what makes him so creepy because he, he becomes like this more than man type of being. So to give him a, a, like a true origin is kind of takes away from that magic. Um, so part of me doesn't like that. And like even the killing joke has a, you know, the idea of him as the stand-up, failed stand-up comedian and, and who turns to a life of crime to help try and support his wife. And I think she's pregnant. And I don't remember. but And then he gets in the Red Hood gang and then, you know, falls in the vat at Ace Chemicals. But it it, it, it has potential to be an incredible movie or I think a very, very, very bad movie. I don't think there's a whole lot of wiggle room um, or like it's not going to be an average movie, um, and it could be the one that makes the Joker as a character have the person portraying him win an Oscar twice, Heath Ledger and Joaquin. Uh, it looks really cool. The, the The makeup is a little bit more like John Wayne Gacy than what we're used to with the typical Joker portrayal. 
So all in all, I'm excited to see it, at least for the fact that it's something different and it's leaps and bounds different than what Jared Leto did with the Joker and Suicide Squad because that was so bad, just so all, all points bad. Um, not for lack of trying, but not great. Um, I also saw a trailer from Men in Black International, and it looks like they're trying to capture the magic of Tessa Thompson and Chris Hemsworth's chemistry from uh, Thor Ragnarok and and bring a little life back into the Men in Black franchise. It looks all parts action and explosions and all the stuff, the monster or alien fighting that you liked from the other ones. But hopefully there's enough of a story there to really draw you in. The movie stacked with a cast. Um, I just hope that that, that that first one holds a little special place for me because it was one of the first movies that I really fell in love with as a kid. And it doesn't seem like we're going to get any Agent K or Agent J or with Tommy Lee Jones or uh, Will Smith. But it, it seems like it's in continuity because at one of the facilities, they have a mural painting of the of something else that I didn't recognize. But then also of uh, J and K fighting the cockroach alien in New York. So I just hope it's a good movie. And Chris Helmsworth continues to defy the odds of being like incredibly talented as an action star, but also very, very funny. He's great comedically. Um, and it seems like he's just going to carry that on with this movie as well. So it probably makes a lot of people very jealous that do the same job as him, that he's able to do those roles as well as being Thor and, you know, Mr. Dreamboat that all the women are in love with. So I hope, I hope that movie movie turns out well. Moving on, there's also some Star Wars leaks, pictures, leaks, pictures. Um, some say some people are saying that they're not real. They look kind of real to me because, like, and then Disney's trying to take them all down from websites. I looked at them. Um, there's really not much from them. Um, the only thing is like there's a leak poster. You don't see any R two, C three PO is holding Chewie's bowcaster, which is interesting. But other than that, it's pretty all pretty much paint by numbers for the this installment of the this the saga. You know, these last two movies, all the same characters. The Knights of Ren are there, so maybe they'll finally be at least talked about for more than thirty seconds and have some like maybe be actual characters instead of weird figures in the background. Um, yeah, yeah, hopefully that movie doesn't suck because I'd like to finish that trilogy on kind of a high note. The Last Jedi, I liked it when it first came out, but the more that I thought about it, that movie really rubs me the wrong way. So I hope J.J. can write the ship for the ending of that third trilogy. Trilogy trilogy cubed. Um, now on to Shazam. So I love Zachary Levi as, a, as an actor and as a person. Um, I loved Chuck when that was on NBC, and really I've rewatched it, I think, twice throughout the the whole series through. Um, and not just him as an actor that I enjoy, but his uh, efforts personally, the fact that I don't know if anyone's ever heard of it, but he ran um, Nerd HQ at San Diego Comic-Cons um, for like three or four years in a row and then had to stop doing it, which is unfortunate. But it was a, like a, a panel, like he'd get panels of actors and stuff to come in and all the money that they raised would go to Operation Smile, which is an organization that helps um, kids fix uh, children with cleft palates. Um, and he just seems like an all around good dude. And, and you see interviews, he's just, so I'm a big supporter. So when I heard that he got this role, I was very excited because he'd get some big time notoriety um, and, and exposure because other than Chuck, people don't really know him from a whole lot. So, um, Entangled. He was the voice of, uh, of, I don't remember the character's name, Entangled. But uh, then I was nervous because DC's track record hasn't been all that great. I was hoping that this movie would be at least pretty good so as to not have his like first big movie starring role just take a dump and ruin any chance of him getting opportunities in the future i also just wanted it to be a good movie because jeff johns has a run from 2011 ish from the new 52 on the character that this film is heavily influenced by that i really like 
Um, some people, like classic fans of the character, don't love it necessarily, but it's kind of my only exposure to the character aside from some comics here or there and uh, and um, Kingdom Come by Mark Wade. <laughs> and in that, he's not what you... I mean, he's kind of the bad guy. So that said, no, I'll do a non-spoiler review so you can see it. Um, it's fantastic. It is an incredible film. I loved it. Um, it made some necessary, I think, changes to that Jeff Johns run show as to fit what they were trying to do for the character and for the um, for all the other characters involved. Um, the casting was great. the The kids in in his Billy's foster house are just top to bottom so great and like almost off the page, jump off the page. They're ca- like visually cast so well. Um, but the standouts are obviously Darla, the youngest girl, and Freddie Freeman, who's Billy's best friend in the house. They, um, the, the, the actors did such a good job, and I'm always kind of impressed when you see, um, well, I mean, Freddie's actor's older, but Darla's actor, actress, um, for them to be that young and have this kind of composure and self-awareness that to, to, it's hard to explain. It's like when some some child actors you can see that aren't really buying into what they're doing. They're just re- like regurgitating lines, but then others they're actually acting. That's well, they're acting, so that's not that hard to explain. But they're great. Um, Mark Strong as Doctor Savannah is menacing in all the right ways, but not. He doesn't chew it up, and it's not not super hammy. And if at any point it does get hammy. It's self-aware almost. Um, they did a really great job with this, with the, for the most part, with the special effects. There's times here or there where it looks real computery, um, particularly when the the character's flying. But other than that, the seven deadly sins are real creepy and almost make it so that kids shouldn't see this if they're too young. Um, but all, I just think the story was executed well. It had a fantastic um, third act which I think a lot of times these DC movies really fall apart in the third act. It wasn't big monster fight in the real dark, smoky city thing that you got from like every single DC movie. It really kind of, it's bright. It's about family. It's about finding, you know, meaning in places that maybe you don't expect to. Um, and oftentimes it's about um, learning to love the things in your life that you don't appreciate until you realize that you need to, the things that you've pushed off. The themes are great. It's it's not a dark film. That It's a really nice change of pace that I think they've been on with Aquaman and with this that have, that have come back around and made the general audience see that it's not this grim, like, melodramatic universe. There's really cool things elements of it and um it can be serious but also silly you know and i think a lot of films these days don't do that are afraid to do that so it's really refreshing to see how much they embrace the silliness and and the um the happy kind of not fluffy but but um childlike nature of what these source material for these these films are, you know, I think with Batman, it's very easy to get dark and grim. But I think when that was so successful with Christopher Nolan's films, Warner Brothers and DC were like, well, everything has to be like that, right? Because that's what succeeds. And what we're learning now is that that's not the case. It should be based off of what the character is and what the story you're trying to tell. You know, you're when you do that with everyone, especially with what he did with Superman, you're putting uh, square pegs into round holes. You're not really, you're trying to jam a character into a th- into like a tone or something that doesn't work with them. So this just fully embraces everything it is, and it's really a fun time. It's the first, realistically, the first DC movie that I've seen in the longest time that made me, when I walked out of the theater, want to turn around and watch another screening. So if that tells you anything, um, it's it's just a fun time throughout. The, the humor, I think the commercials kind of did it a little bit of a disservice because it's real, like... That with the floss dance and stuff, I think it, the commercials were really trying hard to like market to a certain age group, but it really doesn't. I mean, it's yes, it's a lot of fourteen-year-old 
goofy banter and stuff, but it's done well. It's not overdone. Um, and it's just, just a happy, fun. There's some really cool surprises um, that I won't spoil, but I when they happen, they're great. And... Although you might have seen one of them coming, when it does happen, it really, really kind of put it put a real big smile on my face. And that's when I was sitting there in the in the dark of the theater. Um, so I really recommend seeing it. I think this is a great new direction that DC is taking. Um, I, I I see if this movie uh, has a good box office, I could see quite a few sequels. They do set up a sequel, um, and it's it's all parts comic book crazy and silly but also like really interesting and and I don't know what they'll do with the well, one of the post credit scenes but it's it's really kind of it's crazy I made me had to do some some googling and if that's the gonna be I'll just say it'll be interesting to see what Shazam 2 would be based off of, of what they introduce at the end um but if you get a chance, I know Endgame comes out at the end of this month, but you know, check this out before before then. Um, it's really it's a really good time at the movies. Um, other than that, just watch a bunch of Marvel movies until do the Marvel watch until Endgame comes out until I think it's the twenty fifth, twenty fourth, or twenty fifth. You got plenty of time, and don't watch the Thor: The Dark World. Or you probably skip Iron Man two and the Incredible Hulk. You know that'll shave some off for you. Other than that, go go read some comics too. Check out some stuff. Read this Jeff Johns run. Try to get people to watch, read more comics. There's good stuff out there. Great stories. You love the source material or, or uh, the material that they make from the source material. Why not check out where it comes from? And then you might get addicted like me and then end up spending a lot of money. So <laughs> go out there, have some fun. Uh, until next time. Thanks. All right, everybody. That's that's it. That's all I got for you guys. That's all the movie news that I have for you guys. Obviously, if anything big drops. Uh, I will. Uh, I will. Tr- I will update the Facebook page now. I have a lot more. Uh, hopefully, I have more time to update the Facebook page. Just been catching up with work and everything and stuff like that. So, that's it. That's all I got for you guys. Hopefully, you guys um, enjoy your weekend and everything else. If you wanna follow me on any sort of source, uh, any social media, I usually update on stuff I watch over the weekend. I'll probably give my thoughts on Shazam there first as well uh all the links to that are down below in the description slash show notes area the wordpress is down there where i do written reviews i will probably most likely do a written review for shazam as well uh, maybe i'll even do one for pet cemetery i haven't decided on that yet but i will probably definitely do a review for, uh, for shazam on there uh what else is down there all the trailer links are down there again again if anything another trailer drops i'll put it down there but uh yeah anything you want to i will start updating the Facebook page where I I pretty much put all the movie news. It basically gives you an early preview of what we're going to talk about on the podcast, except I go more into detail on the podcast than I do on the Facebook page. Um, So yeah, that's it. That's all I got for you guys. Thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast. Thank you for Mike for tuning back in. It's episode 99 guys. The next podcast is going to be episode 100. Uh, That's really, really nerve wracking for me. Uh, Because I never thought I would get to episode 100. I didn't even think I would have a podcast. But that's what's coming up. So, uh, yeah. Uh, the next I'm not going to say next week because I don't want to promise you guys. But uh, the next podcast will be episode 100. Uh, Hopefully, I'll have uh, something fun for you guys. Hopefully, it will be a good, bountiful uh, movie news week. And, um, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. I, I... I, I've, it's been a while. I'm a little rusty of ending these podcasts. So thank you guys so much for listening. Hopefully you guys have a great weekend. Be safe out there. Be good people. And as always, as I always finish off the podcast, go watch some movies. Woo-hoo! Yeah! Give it up! Movies! <laughs>